a very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part 13, preparing the cylinder assembly and refitting it to the engine. The job starts by removing the surplus paint from the underside of the cylinder so that when it sits on the machine pads on the bed plate, it sits on there very squarely. And for this job, I'm using a surgical scalpel. It's a very blunt surgical scalpel, as you can imagine, by doing jobs like this, but it's okay for removing the paint. And the next job is to re tap the holes in the cylinder itself very carefully. Breaking off the tap in the cylinder at this stage would not be a good thing. I'm being especially careful that when the tap bottoms in the hole, I don't continue to rotate it and therefore snap it off. This, by the way, is a plug tap. It has a flat end and it will more or less tap all the way down to the bottom of the hole. I don't know what the existing thread was, but it's a perfect size for re tapping with a 7BA tap. With the tapping job complete, it's time to remove the burrs created by the tap, and for this I'm using a small needle file. This cylinder casting needs to sit perfectly flat on the bed plate. As I've shown before, when I initially cleaned up the crank web, I'm using an electric drill to rotate it so I can hold some emery cloth against it. This time though, it's not rust that I'm removing, it's just the paint that I accidentally applied to it when I painted the bed. Normally, the cylinders on S50 steam engines are held to the bed plate using three bolts, or should I say, three slot-headed machine screws. Instead of using three 7BA machine screws, I'm going to use studs instead. I almost forgot to press record on this bit. I'm cleaning up the top of the crosshead guide and the cylinder mounting area on the bed itself to get rid of any paint residue. One of the cylinder mounting bolts needs to be a lot longer than the others because one of these studs goes through a much larger, thicker and substantial part of the bed casting. Studs are a much better idea for holding cylinders onto bed plates. The cylinder is much less likely to work loose using studs because I can tighten them up a lot more. Before I fit the cylinder to the bed plate, first of all I need to put the crosshead in place and tighten the nut. And after doing that, I can now fit the cylinder to the bed plate. You will notice that there is a small amount of adjustment available. This is to line up the cylinder with the crosshead guide. The holes in the bed plate are just slightly bigger than the studs. And this is a good thing because it allows for perfect alignment of the cylinder with the crosshead guide and the crank web. In this clip, I'm showing the tightening of the nuts holding the studs in place. No room for a barco spanner here, so I'm using a nut spinner. But this is a special nut spinner. It's one that I cut a groove in the top and this allows me to use a screwdriver in the nut spinner so I can make sure that the cylinder is firmly clamped to the bed plate. But it's important not to apply too much pressure because I do not want to shear off the studs. The crank pin on this engine has a very fine slot in it and it looks okay so I'm using a very fine screwdriver. But if I try and tighten it fully with this small screwdriver it's going to mark the slot. What I intend to do is re-grind an old Stanley knife or box cutter blade to fit into the slot, then I can hold it in a pair of pliers and tighten them up properly, without marking it. The time has finally come to refit the flywheel. Nothing difficult here, it just slides onto the crankshaft and it's a very good fit. And I can fit it in exactly the same position as it was because the builder drilled a hole part way through the crankshaft, not very far, just enough to take the tip of the grub screw and hold the flywheel precisely in the right position. And a quick test shows that everything is rotating very freely and the crosshead top bars are not in place yet. I like to do it this way, I fit the crosshead bars last. I usually do it this way so I can see if there's any misalignment without having the crosshead top bars in place to obstruct my view. And everything seems to be perfectly fine. Really, I suppose I could run this engine without fitting the top crosshead bars, but no, that wouldn't be a good idea. The cylinder, piston rod, crosshead, connecting rod and crank web are all in line. In the next episode, I'll be finishing the rebuild and running the engine. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.